All right, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. So, we all know of the George Floyd situation. That was the man who we all saw around the world as that police officer laid his knee firmly pressed on this man's neck as he was face down, handcuffed on the ground, right? Well, let's fast forward to what has happened now. A judge has sentenced Derek Chauvin, which is the name of that ex-officer, to 22 and a half years in prison for the death of George Floyd. 22 and a half years in prison. There are a lot of people that are saying, listen man, um, that's not enough time. You took away that man's life. He should have at least gotten about 35 years as a starter. 40 years as a starter. But guess what? We have never in the history of America had a police officer who was a white police officer murder a black person and been sentenced to that many years. So the wheels of justice are turning, but they're turning slowly in our favor. Nevertheless, they are turning. Okay? Now, Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer convicted in the death of George Floyd, was handed his sentence this Friday. Today is the 26th of the 6th month of the year. He was handed his sentence on the 25th. So June 25th of 2021, remember that day, this police officer, ex-police officer now, got 20 plus years, 22 and a half years in prison for the murder of a black man. And I call it a murder, even though that is not what they call it in court. Let's get into the details. So in April, Chauvin, who was 45 years old, he was found guilty on three counts. Listen to the three counts. They found him guilty on second degree unintentional murder. I don't know how you unintentionally murder someone when you sat on their neck, watched them struggle to breathe for as long as he did. Even when people, bystanders were videotaping him and were telling him, hey, the guy is passing out, man. Look, he can't breathe. He still stayed on this man's neck. That showed us a clear picture of what a lot of these officers think. It is that this is a black life. Nothing's going to happen to me. The most that's going to happen to me is they'll probably force me into early retirement. I'll still collect my pension or they'll probably relocate me to another precinct, another city, whatever. They charge him with second degree unintentional murder. This is what he was found guilty of. Third degree murder and second degree manslaughter for pressing his knee against George Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. Do you know how long nine minutes is? I want you to go into your smartphone because everybody has one nowadays and I want you to find that timer and I want you to set the timer, go and let it run till it hits nine minutes to see how long this man sat on this man's neck and vertebrae and he killed this man to me he murdered this man in front of the entire world to me a message was sent this was a answer to the taking a knee that colin kaepernick started taking a knee when the national anthem was playing and it was not meant to be a disrespect to any law enforcement official it was not meant to be a disrespect to the flag of the united states of america it was not meant to be a disrespect to our military personnel. it was meant to be an outcry saying that we don't feel like we are in the land of the free and the home of the brave because we are being killed disproportionately and the people who are killing us are law enforcement officials in uniforms that are also getting away with it which means that the system is backing them and letting them go without holding them accountable that is all that taking a knee meant some people took that knee very personal on the other side of the law and in this case, I believe that Derek Chauvin was one of these people, an undercover secret racist 
who had another agenda even though he was in a police uniform and he thought he was in the proper place to carry out or execute that one for the team so instead of watching us take a knee when the anthem plays he took a knee in George Floyd's neck and he said this is what I think about your taking a knee BS it was blatant murder man blatant murder now of course they're expected to appeal and I hope that he gets nowhere with this appeal but I can tell you straight ahead before anything happens that there might be where they grant him a new trial at a new location why because there was pictures that were dug up of one of the jurors wearing a certain shirt that had a certain message on it get your knee off my damn neck now when you select jurors to be in a jury pool a juror is not supposed to have any hard feelings towards a case they prefer to have people be jurors who know nothing about the case that way your your decision of guilty or not guilty would be unbiased but let's be honest and let's be realistic if you were on earth during the whole george floyd thing there's no way that you did not know about what happened and having known about what happened there is no way that you did not draw some form of an opinion yes there were some people that said well he shouldn't have resisted even though he was not resisting there were others who said well that's how it goes the police is right and i'm riding with the blue no matter what even though they just witnessed the murder in front of them on video and then of course there were others who said this is blatant wickedness that was murder whatever decision or choice or side that juror was on it showed on the jurors t-shirt which tells them that there was someone who had already made up their mind that they were going to find Chauvin guilty regardless of whatever so put me on the jury I'm gonna make sure his ass is guilty I don't even want to hear the details of what happened and how they happened based on that alone in a court of law I want you to understand this his sentence could be overturned but we will hear about that later on so Chauvin was sentenced on the most serious charge second degree unintentional murder with under Minneapolis law this is supposed to carry a max of 40 years <laughs> this judge had other things on his mind now juror at the sentencing this juror says this is justice and despair at the same time and we're talking about the juror called Brandon Mitchell go look him up Brandon Mitchell served on the jury in the murder trial and he reacted to the sentencing on Friday night telling ABC News Live Prime Juju Chang that he thought that the jail time would have been higher I think it's a little bit on the light side but it is justice and despair I think the judge did a great job with that I was maybe expecting more closer to like 25 to 30 years but hey 22 and a half years that's still justice that's a long time for you to go sit down in a prison for 22 years there's no bringing back the loved one but this is some kind of a closure not to mention George Floyd's family also received I believe it was 22 million dollars so I guess they wanted the sentence to sound like how much they paid them there's something funny in these numbers I don't know what it is but we'll figure it out later on paid them 22 million dollars sentenced him to 22 years I think everything should go away no it's not and I'm not saying that the 22 million dollars that the family was paid is uh forgive me if I'm wrong about the amount they were paid you can go look that up also but I'm not saying that that money is good enough 
But at that point, George Floyd has a daughter or he has children that were left behind. They're going to be needing to be taken care of. We can't bring him back. Not even if they gave him a billion dollars with a B. It still would not bring him back, right? So, reflecting on his experience as a juror two months after the trial, Mitchell told Chang that it just makes me take a step back and just say how important it is to be a part of the jury and how much change we have to do in terms of policing in the United States of America in general. There are situations that we have to find a way to avoid and they should never happen like this particular situation. In no case, shape, way, or form should a police officer feel emboldened and empowered enough to kneel on someone's neck while their hands are handcuffed behind their back and suffocate you to death, staying there for nine minutes, ignoring a human's cry. I can't breathe. I can't breathe until he started saying, Mama! Because he was dying and calling out to his dying mom who had just passed away not too long ago. No way, case, shape, or form should this ever happen. But it does. And even after George Floyd's case, it still happened. Let's not forget something here. Let's not forget that they didn't just grab Derek Chauvin and say, Hey, we saw you on video. What you did was wrong. To jail you go. Thousands and thousands, and, uh, matter of fact, millions and millions of people marched. This was like the biggest march in history. You had people in the UK that were marching. You had people that took to the streets of France that were marching. You, there was outside noise being made that the justice system in the United States of America could not ignore. They had to throw that dog a bone. You understand? Because the whole world was watching and the whole world was letting America know that we watched y'all. We saw that white police officer murder that man. What are you guys going to do about it? Oh, he's not arrested yet? Okay, let's take to the streets. Let's do it city by city, state by state. And they decided that, hey man, this isn't going to stop until we hold somebody accountable. Now, the other guys that were involved, like the Asian man that was there on the scene, they've been going through their own turmoils. And his relationship to Chauvin is something on a personal level, having to do with sister dating this one and that one and the other. Won't get into that right now, but they're about to stand trial now as well. Let's see what they will get for their part because they actually held a crowd at bay stand back you heard me say stand back right they held the crowd at bay so that chauvin could do what he did they never said hey man get off of him he's gonna die chauvin stop he's dying none of that they could have literally walked over to their fellow officer Chauvin and picked him up off of the suspect. Hey, stand him up, stand him up, stand him up. They did nothing. They stayed there and allowed Chauvin to kill George Floyd. So let's see what their sentencing is going to be. And like uh, Reverend Al Sharpton said, let us not feel that we're here to celebrate because justice would have been if George Floyd would have never been killed. Justice would have been the maximum sentence, 40 years. 22 and a half years is longer than we have ever gotten, but it's shorter than what we should have gotten in the past. Sharpton told this to a press conference after the sentencing. He was joined by civil rights attorney Ben Crump and members of Floyd's family, and to get, together they started a prayer in front of the Hennepin County courthouse boy black people marching and praying marching and praying and praying and marching and marching and then praying some more so they could pray some more to march again and yet we only get a tip of justice every time not a spoonful not a cupful a tip every time in this case 
we'll take it for what it is and we'll take it as other officers out there can also look at this and say hey maybe if i disregard and i go down like chauvin did then it's a possibility that i could be sitting in prison for 22 years prison is not going to be a bed of roses for chauvin this is 22 years in hell for him and i don't care if they cut that 22 in half and gave him 11 years instead it is going to be hell on earth for him he is going to have to live with prison politics there are going to be white supremacist groups in prison who are going to welcome him with a badge of honor because he killed one for the team and he's going to have to play as if that is what he did even if it wasn't just for his survival prison is very divided prison politics you have the hispanics you have the blacks and you have the whites then you have different groups and gangs and you have the muslims and you have the religious christians etc etc prison is extremely divided i am thinking that chauvin will not be doing time in gp general population too dangerous and i believe the shot callers and the riders will be after him just for stripes i killed the man that killed george floyd think about it solitary confinement is hell think about it leave your comments in the comment section below it's soulflow tv and i'll catch you on the next video i'm out peace